here's an example of what happens when you get distracted. I went and checked my email. Too much time has gone by. Now it's okay because I'm using one and a quarter inch pipe and it's sleeved up. It's not burned, but that is a lot longer than it actually takes to do the vent. I was kind of caught slipping there. So, see, failure to heed one's own warnings. Learn from that. Stay around your bender. So, to begin with, let's do an unsupported bend. This is one and a quarter. And we're getting there we are. Now, let's see, with a little internal support. Of course, this is the most jagged and nasty piece of metal hose I can find in the shop. But... Nice. I've never actually bent one and a quarter inch pipe this tight, so I'm kind of happy right now. I know it's a pitiful thing to be happy about, but... <laughs> so, once again, we get our internal support there. I'm noticing this is where my printing is. You pay attention to that. So I'm just going to pull it tight, make sure that any stretching that wants to happen happens now. And then when I come back... Turn not to that position but very close without any kinking. Now I can see it's starting to oval there. So we'll just call it that's pretty good. So it looks like this is this is not you saw how that was with some internal support. It worked pretty good. You can go pretty tight with this stuff. So that's about a safe margin for one and a quarter inch pipe. not fully hardened, it's going to want to spring back out, but that's okay. Okay, so one and a half inch pipe right here. Switch to a B-sized high temp fender while nobody is looking. To begin with, here's the bend with no internal support. You can do this stuff really fast. I'm just going slow for the dramatic effect. There we have our tank. So, take metal hose. There's a lot of things. You can even use a slinky, honestly, on the outside of your pipe, and it will also prevent that just by not letting the walls move anywhere. But, drop in internal support. Make out a band. So this is one and a half inch PVC pipe, Schedule 40. I'm liking that. I've never bent it this tight. This is another one of those. It's ovaling a little bit, but the internal volume of the pipe should still be the same. Everything's kind of moving to compensate. So. You stretch it out with your internal support and come back to and you can see if I had used a larger internal support I'd have a better bend right now it's all about preparation has a lot to do you know the tool that we send you really just heats the pipe up and then from there you've got to work with it. We can offer a lot of solutions and pointers on how to do that. We're more than happy to follow through with this and help you get the most out of it. So one thing we don't want to see is somebody disappointed because we've been having a good time here. So anyway, it looks like this is about what you get out of a one and a half inch pipe. You go much tighter than that and you're going to start having some serious kinking problems. But I'll repeat it again, if we had used a one and a half inch internal support and then made that stretch further where I'm getting this ovaling right now, we would not. Now at some point you stretch too far and this outer wall will tear. We might even get a chance to do that when we get to the three inch, but here we have it. Now we'll just move right along. Two inch pipe is next. And again, that's not hardened so it's going to spring back 
closer to its original position, but that's no big deal. We're not using it. And as always, if you work that pipe, if you pull that pipe, and if you use a sponge to cool it off and everything, you can get it, as soon as you see it take a shape, you can make it keep that shape just by holding it in that position and not allowing it to move. So, this, by the way, is an example of a B-size bender, but this is not the one that we ship out to our clients. Since we built that to order, we don't have any in the shop right now, or else I'd show you. But basically, you can imagine a regular PVC Bendit model this fat, and that's what you get. It's very cool. By having two elements, this thing puts out a lot more heat. It is a lot hotter. But what's cool is these things actually use less electricity than your stove does. So it's not, even though it seems crazy, you can run four of these out of the same outlet and you won't trip the breaker. It's really cool. Anyway, we'll get back to this. When that thing's ready to bend, I'll bring you back. Alright guys, you're not going anywhere, but I am. Ha 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 ha! Two inch, here we go. Like the rest, we'll start off. Ooh, this is very hot. You see that? This is a double heat element, and it's a lot hotter than the other one. It's twice as hot as really that. So anyway, here's an unsupported bend. This starts showing really how bigger pipe equals faster kink. You see it right there. So, same thing. I know this seems a little bit repetitive, but I'm really just interested in seeing these inside minimum diameters. I'm as interested in seeing it, probably more interested than you are. But, here we go. Two-inch pipe. That looks like that's almost down to 12 inches. You can see we got that tighter than we got that one and a half inch there. So, same game. Give it some good bends to begin with. Make sure that any stretching that wants to happen happens while you've got your support in it. You don't want to leave, if you're going for the tightest possible bend like this, you really don't want to leave your support inside of the pipe because if you do, you're going to have a hard time getting it out. Like even if I just keep it bent like this and try to take it, oh, what? It's lit right out. But it's, if it's a really tight bend and you try to do that, ha, no, it's not going to happen. And if, like if I would have let the pipe harden right there instead of taking it out then, that would have been a nightmare. You can see, I think, Yep, this is about what we're going to get out of 2 inch. You can see, I don't know what we're looking at, it might be, if we were to complete the circle, about a 36 inch internal diameter or so. And this is something you've got to do it, you've got to try it yourself to really know what's going on. I'm just kind of throwing out these as ballpark figures so you can see what PVC is capable of. And pretty much any bending system is going to give you the same you know, something, if you do a cold bend, yeah, you're probably going to crack it by this point, but any hot bending system is going to give you this. The real off, uh, advantage that we offer is the fact you can have this level of malleability on nine feet of pipe, and that's where it starts getting, that's where you can start to do things that were impossible before. So, I am now going to sleeve this thing up, sleeve up the B size, and drop on a piece of three inch pipe and then that will pretty much wrap this up. So here we go. So the last piece today, we got this three inch pipe right here. Now this one is so large and the minimum internal diameter is so big that I'm actually just gonna go straight to a supported band and not worry about doing an unsupported because by now you know what a kink looks like. So more metal hose. This stuff is cool. This stuff is really cool. What we're gonna do? Take the pipe off the bender. Drop the metal hose in it. Now you'll notice, like right away, you see that bubble there? Three-inch pipe, you cannot bend nearly as tightly as you can bend half-inch pipe. I mean, there's more plastic in a single wall, one side of the wall, than there is in both walls combined on a half-inch pipe. 
So you just got to be ready for that and just understand three inch pipe if you're going to make bends, make big bends. This one if you need a tight 90, go by the fitting. But if you want to make a huge arc, say if you were to take this curve and just extrapolate that out, finish it for a greenhouse, this will produce a huge, it'll be the size of an aircraft hangar, you know? And again, on this, I hate to keep going back to the greenhouse example, but it's where my mind is at, so live with it. Uh, for this one, you know, in the greenhouse, you can charge this whole pipe with water and have tapped-in spray nozzles. And if you have these spaced two feet on center with, you know, use your own judgment on what kind of spray nozzles you want to use, you can use a hose interface and charge the entire structure with water, and you will have a self-watering greenhouse. So this actually, again, I'm pretty sure, so I see we can go to here, but you see that's just unacceptable. Now for what you're doing, that might be all right though, so that's something to keep in mind. When I bend a pipe, I want it to be perfect. I want it to have no kinks, I want it to have no ovaling, but that may not be what you need. If you don't mind this, look, you can go. And it would probably get tighter, I just don't want to break the hose that's inside of it. But if you don't want that, just work within the limitations of your material and you'll be sure to get what you want out of it. So, we'll go back through, put them next to each other. We got three inch, it looks like that's as tight as you're gonna get right there. Too tight, actually. We've got two inch, that's considerably tighter. You know, if you put them, I don't know if you can see that very well. And we've got inch and a half which we're getting tighter, you can see it, it's coming. And this one could have been a little bit tighter, it just kind of sprung back because I let go of it early. One and a quarter inch, now you're starting to get into some serious bend territory. That can go places. Now all of these can, they all have their places and applications, it's just for you to decide, not us. One inch, now we're getting tight. That is something right there. That's probably six inches right there from inside to inside. And we're still looking good. Little bit of oval, but not too bad. Three quarter inch. And now I'm going to pull out the better example. This is an example. This shows right here. This is a freehand bend, and you see how it's got a little weirdness. This is a formed bend, and you see how that's perfect. It's perfectly circular. You know, and this is just to bear in mind everything that you've seen on this video here is all that was all freehand all just for demonstration purposes when you sit down to make a finished product if you have a well-designed forming system the sky's the limit you know you can see how this one sits inside of this one and it still has better integrity and this is just by taking our time and setting up the right form for the job and we get down to half inch you know and that I can barely fit my fist in there I mean that's a tight one and if we had finished this circle I couldn't fit my fist through it if I wanted to so you can see half inch for design details and also for things like if you're inside of a watering system if um, four plants and you have like drip emitters or something you can bring them straight into the pipe and you can run the pipe wherever you need to inside of your area so very cool stuff I think that just about completes this section on the minimum inside diameter of the bend. I hope this was helpful and it's something again you're definitely going to play with yourself because in your environment, we're up here in Colorado in the mountains so our environment is different day to day and hour to hour. In your environment your humidity is going to be different that might help you with flexibility. Your barometric pressure is going to be different. Your outside ambient temperature is going to be different. And all these things not only come into play in the amount of time that it takes you to make a bend, but also in the quality of the finished bend. So it's where if you can find whatever your perfect conditions are and you can maintain a controlled environment, then you can guarantee perfect bends within the limitations of the material just by proper preparation.